everybody, this is Koshik Ranchard from the Ranchard Law Group, and today we're going to talk about when you should not apply for the J-1 Exceptional Hardship Waiver. There's a few factors that I want to discuss with you because there might be situations where it doesn't make sense to apply for a J-1 Exceptional Hardship Waiver. A J-1 Exceptional Hardship Waiver is available to you if you have a U.S. citizen spouse or child or a permanent resident spouse or child, and they would face exceptional hardship if they returned to their home country. Now, if you could go back to your home country with your spouse or child and there would not be exceptional hardship, then it doesn't make sense for you to apply. The question is, what is exceptional hardship? There's often not necessarily a bright line test of what exceptional hardship is. There needs to be a myriad of factors sometimes that are discussed to make the argument of exceptional hardship. Some of those forms of exceptional hardship could be uh, mental health conditions that your spouse or child would face, healthcare conditions, country conditions. But if you have no forms of exceptional hardship whatsoever, then I would recommend that you don't apply. A lot of times you may not even realize certain forms of hardship that you may have until discussing that with a J-1 waiver attorney who focuses on this area. So I recommend that you actually talk to an attorney before you make uh, this determination. The second uh, reason you may not want to apply is if you are not married to a U.S. citizen, therefore not able to adjust status after you get the J-1 waiver, or if you're not going to have a work visa option um, after you get the J-1 waiver. So let's delve deeper into this issue. The J-1 waiver is not a lawful status in and of itself. What that means is that that's not going to get you legal. The J-1 waiver just allows you to stay in the United States and not go back for two years. But you need to either, you need to have a way to stay here afterwards, whether that is marrying a U.S. citizen or whether that is applying for an H-1B visa. If you're applying for an H-1B visa, you need to um, carefully time when you're going to do that. Uh, because there might be a period of time where you would not be able to apply for the H-1B visa. For instance, if you're subject to the H-1B cap, you only can apply April 1st for an October 1st start date. And then the third thing that you may want to evaluate as to whether or not you should apply is whether you could go home for a period of two years. And that may seem obvious, but that's something to really evaluate. If you could go home for two years, I recently had a consultation where they said, well, you know what, actually I could go home. And then in that situation, then it makes more sense to go back home um, if you don't mind going back home. And then it defeats the whole purpose of applying for an exceptional hardship waiver because it's based off of exceptional hardship if you had to go, if your spouse or child had to go back home. Well, if they don't mind going back home, then don't apply for the exceptional hardship waiver. Uh, these are three factors of when you should not apply for a J-1 Exceptional Hardship Waiver. And if you'd like to learn more about whether or not you qualify, contact our office at 916-613-3553. We answer questions like this all day long, and I would love to discuss with you whether or not you qualify for the waiver. Thank you, and have an awesome day.